as we read Romans 8, 28, it's literally that promise that all things work together for good. But a lot of people, they don't really take that verse to heart and claim it. A question that I would like to ask to you to really think about is that if God was right here in this room, and then He gave you as many chances and many options and wishes on things that you could change in your life, I'm sure you and I would pick up every mistake that we've done, everything that we've done that hurt other people, everything that we've done was uh, a dumb decision, and we want to change the decision and we could have had a better life. Most importantly, I'm sure a lot of us would pick out the sins we've committed so that we could change them. Now, the question is this, is that why wouldn't God ever do that? God just lets life continue as it is. Wouldn't, he prefer a life, uh, wouldn't God prefer a person who had a clean slate, a life without sin? Well, the thing is this, is that God, he keeps restoring mankind over and over again. But one thing you got to keep in mind is mankind, no matter how many chances they get from God, they're still innately rebellious. That's a fleshy thing, fleshly thing. Look at the book of Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. This is something innate within us, and no matter how many times God gives us chances, we still mess up. Why? Because we are very, very wicked. Notice right here that Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. So notice right here, no matter how much Paul tries to live a clean life, a spiritual life, the problem is, is that innately, within his flesh, it's wicked. Over here, however, there's something that is good that wants it. But there's this conflict that goes between good and evil all the time. So that's the reason why God doesn't start all over again, because he knows how many chances that he can give that you would still mess up. Now think about this. What did God do? What did God do is that he had his beloved son who committed no sin at all to die on the cross of Calvary. And because the Lord Jesus Christ loved you enough to shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary, what it did with all the things that you can think about, mistakes, right? The sins you committed. The faults in your character that you need to improve. The bad habits and our failures that we wish that we could have done better. What the Lord Jesus Christ did with all these things is that he gave us a clean slate. So it's covered under the blood. Because it's covered under the blood, God no longer sees it. Now, because it's covered under the blood and God no longer sees it, Sometimes we wonder this, is that, you know, I wish that, I wish that this can apply with my everyday life right now where I don't have to commit sin anymore. That's the idea. Not just that my sins are covered under the blood and God doesn't see my sin, but me, myself, I don't want to look at my own sins. I don't want to look at my faults. I mean, our flesh remembers the things that we've done. So why wouldn't God do it that way, right? Sometimes we wonder about that. Well, it's because even though he covered under the blood, you're still born and locked up in this flesh. That's the thing. So what he provided was the spirit within you where it can seek for good. So that's great. At least I got something spiritual in my life where it can combat the fleshy desire. So a lot of people have trouble giving up the worldly music. But then getting into something spiritual like good godly Christian music has helped clear away that innate fleshy thing. 
So God provided us that one too. But hey, I wish it was just this. Yeah. You know, why is this here? You know why? Because it's permanently edged as long as you live in this. This cannot be undone. Now think about this. The Lord says the best, right? At Romans 8, 28. Best. Best. I wish it was best that this did not exist at all. You know, that's what we think as our best. But God knows this is that even if he covers under the blood, provides you a spiritual nature, gives you a chance over and over again, what? This thing will always be wicked at best. So this is wicked at best. So God has to think something of best that can use this wicked thing at best. One of the most beautiful things in life is this. Let's look at 1 Peter. Chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Let's look at chapter 1 and then verse 7. Chapter 1 verse 7. And then I want your other hand, not only to go to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7, but Romans 5. Romans 5. There is something the Lord provided that helps you a lot with this innate fleshy, fleshly thing. No one is proud of the wicked things they did in life. Whether it be selling drugs, whether it be uh, sexual sins, and etc. But there is something that we really don't understand. Something that we don't understand is that sometimes these innate sinful things the Lord can turn them into something that would be best in your life. Now, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season. If need be, ye are in heaviness through what? Manifold temptations. I mean, this is hard, man. Sometimes, no matter how hard you pray about, Lord, cure me of this drug addiction, it just don't go away like that. It's not like the blood of Jesus magically or the spiritual nature magically just entirely eliminates it. If someone teaching you that, like these dumb Calvinists, and they're just full of the devil themselves. To get to that spiritual level takes a long process of time. It's not something that happens automatically like that, no matter how deep or sincere your repentance is. So you got to understand this, is that why would, wouldn't God do that? Like just automatically turn a switch like that. Because we fail to understand we are in the flesh. And God knows that with this flesh, that it is sinful at best. So he has to do it this way. With this manifold temptations, it can be done for your betterment. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire... See that? It needs to go through suffering. Might be found unto what? Praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You see what God does? What he does with your sinful life is, now listen up, you onlineers are, are desperate. I know that. You want to be free from the addictions. People in here too, you're struggling with something spiritually in your life. But you've got to understand, which your pastor mentioned several times, but it's like we don't really get it is that that's why this suffering is necessary. What does that mean? That means struggling back and forth. That means overcoming mistake after mistake after mistake. That means making failure after tons of failures and learning from failures. It's this suffering that starts to clean off from what was black to what is red in suffering and then eventually to something blue, which is spiritual. And that's God's best in your life. All right, so your pastor is showing right here that what was sinful at first, it goes through this suffering process which is what you guys are avoiding. Because of what? Because of these other sins 
that you're not paying attention to. Guilt, shame. And to be quite honest, it is pride at best. So because of this, these specific sins, discouragement. How many of you are discouraged with your struggles? How many of you are depressed with failing God again? How many of you are hurt that you've hurt other people with this? Now, this is something you need to get through your head, is that these are the specific sins Satan is using more than these that you're struggling with. Wow. Satan's using more of this because you're at this phase, not this phase. See, you know what your problem is? So let me explain it more. See, you think that when you're struggling with your sin issues, and trying to improve things for the Lord, you think that your problem is right here at this phase. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what's going on. If you have that spiritual nature, it's at a conflict stage. You're not stuck at this stage. You're at this transition conflict stage with spirit and flesh. This transition conflict stage is right here. Suffering. You know I'm right. You know I'm right about this. Any person, I, I dare say every single person who is a saved believer knows this conflict exists of, yeah, you don't want to mess up in sin, but yeah, it wants to fall in sin. And then that conflict is what creates these. It is during this conflict Satan puts that within the conflict here. Guilt, shame, depression, discouragement. So when Satan puts these things in your mind, that's when what happens? You go back to here. When you're in here, this is not where you mess up. I failed again, Pastor. I know you fell back here, but you just need to go through here again. I made a mistake again, Pastor. I know that. I wish God can get rid of it so that I can live perfectly. I know that. But guess what? This, as long as you're in here, this is innate. So what's the best for you? The best for you, this is something you, that you can't think about, but this is something even lost people will say. Even lost people who struggle with addictions, who go through AA programs or therapy, etc., a lot of them will say this. Those who, commit, who are felons, criminals, and etc., will say to the people, all the things that I did in my life, I would not change even one of them. Praise the Lord. Why? Because they say this, because they're right here. I would not be able to help out thousands or to develop the talents or minister other people had it not been those, what, mistakes that I committed in my life, those sins that I committed in my life. You know that? You know what people, a hurting world needs? A hurting world, broken people need broken people like you. Amen. Not a full person. That's great. You know what Jesus says? They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not. You know who Jesus did not call? Jesus did not call people who are already here. Mm -hmm. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And he will take broken people like you through this so that you can come out the best. Amen. You got to realize this. Where you are today with your skills and talents could be because of the defects that you found in your character at the beginning. Didn't you know that even uh, therapy or tran uh, vocational transition works where they help criminals and people who are felons, in prison, etc.? juvenile detention centers, they try to find a skill that they're good at. And you know what they think about? The skills that they were back in these days. And what can we do to change these unhealthy skills to something healthy? The things that you thought that were sinful in your life, what were they that can be used this now? You used to be a rock singer, right? Can't you not transform that voice to sing for the Lord Jesus Christ at church? You used to be a liberal activist, very good, at, uh, very good at boldly holding signs and passing your materials. Transform that into being a street preacher for the Lord. Amen. 
A lot of people don't understand. I was a homosexual, and I struggle with homosexuality. I was in these dark sins. What can that be used for the good, for the good of the Lord? Use that to other people, to thousands, and I'm talking about thousands out there Amen. who are struggling with it, and no matter how hard the pastor preaches a sermon, it does not meet their specific problems more than a person who went through that same sinful struggle. Yeah. So you know what's the blessing in your life is this, is that if God were to give you something where you can change some things in your life, obviously you and I would want to get rid of all the sins that we had in our life. None of us want to live in sin or displease our Lord. But to be quite honest, that was not God's plan in your life. His plan was broken, sinful things that you messed up in, and let's transform that how you can use it for my glory. So for those of you who are struggling out there, yeah, I know you messed up in sin. Yeah, I know that you failed again. But it's not, it's, not, it's not from learning the failures. It's not from overcoming the mistakes. It's not from struggling that you're a loser. It's a loser when you stay right here. What do you do? You're going through a natural, natural, natural human process that everyone is going through. And don't let, see, you're looking at the wrong sins. It's not these, it's these that Satan's using on you during this time. And don't look at, don't look at only here. See, that's the problem with you. You're all looking at only here, the best. Being, oh, I wanna be like Pastor Gene Kim teaching the Bible. Oh, I wanna be like him where he's able to preach hard against sin. Oh, I want to be like him where he's full with knowledge of the scripture. Oh, I want to be. See, you're only looking at the best. You know what Gene Kim went through? He went through a lot right here. And these things came from right here. Gene Kim, all he is, is just like you. A sinner saved by grace. And because of that, the Lord put me through here, which put me right here. I always, a little disclosure of myself that can help people online. There were some sins that I struggled with, and there were character defects that I had. And because of these things, your pastor always felt incompatible. Isn't that amazing? Your pastor felt incompatible. He felt unworthy. And he also felt like that there's, uh, he can't even function in normal society. Isn't that hard to believe? Your pastor strongly believed that he's not even able to function in a normal working place, normal kind of life. I was incredibly slow. I was dumb. I know that's hard to believe. Yeah, I'm dumb. Okay, that's how I thought of myself as. I made too many mistakes. Even while pastoring, I made mistakes that hurt some people. So your pastor, what did he do during that whole time? Not only that, there were other people and even preachers who thought I was not qualified to preach. And I knew that the whole world was watching me. And especially since I'm online, they're watching me even more now. And now I'm stuck in a, one of the worst liberal areas in the world and imagine the immensity of pressure that's on me. God, I don't know how to pay the bills. I don't know how to take care of these people. You know what a lot of Christians would do at this point? They would walk away. They would quit the ministry. They would think that they're definitely not qualified. Is that you? Is there a new challenge you're going through in your job with your family? Maybe the church needs you to do something and it raises you to the next spiritual level. You feel unworthy, incompatible. If you stay down here in unworthiness, incompatibility, guess what? You will stay down here and you are sinful. It's not wrong to be in here. And guess what? This is how you become the best. How Gene Kim became the best was all the way back here. His failures, his mistakes, his sins, his bad habits, and his faults. And the Lord found certain character defects where he used that slow-mindedness to become more deeper into the Bible. Where his character defects of not being able to communicate well with people, he because he was thinking five different interpretations and didn't know common sense, the Lord transformed it to counsel difficult people. That's good, 
And you see how the Lord can do? The Lord uses defects, even sins, for a reason. For a reason. It's to make you the best now. See, Calvinists, they got it wrong. They think that God deliberately planned out Adam's fall, make, forced that to happen so that it can make redemption better. That is totally wicked and false because man has free choice in there. But there is, some, there is something true about that if you put free will in there. If you put free will in there where God knows that man, because he's going to mess up with Adam, I have a great plan. I'm going to make redemption even greater and better. Yeah. That for thousands of years, people will die for not my name because they know how much I loved and died for them. Where there's going to come a day where people will run around the aisles and sob tears of joy when they sing, I'm just a sinner, yes, saved by Thank grace. So this is the beauty of God. Don't hate yourself, please. Know that this is the pearl that God gave up everything, right. just like that parable of the rich man, where he gave up everything because he thinks that you are that special and precious to him. If you don't, guess what? If you're not going to even give up everything just to see yourself that valuable as a pearl, God already did, even if you don't. Amen. It's now your choice to believe it by faith and make that pearl valuable to the eyes of God. If I didn't think that way, how could I have ministered to you? Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight's teachings were a blessing to the hearers, helped us. Uh, so many are discouraged and hurt by sin, struggles. Give us victory, Lord. Encourage us. Help us to realize, hey, these faults and these, these dropouts that I went through can be used even more to magnify the glory of God, not to weaken my faith. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we'll just stand strong and draw even closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.